What's up, y'all? It's your boy Jason here with the Cow Park Bros. And of course, on behalf of my fellow host, Terrence, I just want to come to you and kind of say thank you for listening to us for all this time. And can you believe it's been almost one year, the Cow Park Bros? Yes. Our anniversary episode is coming up very fast. It'll be in April. So again, thank you for all that time. Thank you for listening. And in fact, for our anniversary show, we want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. We want to hear messages from you, whether it be go to our website, send us an actual voice message, or go into our voicemail, send it that way, or just send us a message on social media. We want to hear from you. We want to know what your favorite part of the Cal Park Bros is, what you've enjoyed the most, what you haven't enjoyed, what you love the most, favorite segments, favorite moments, whatever it may be. We just want to hear from you. And whatever we receive, we're going to incorporate that into our anniversary episode and just enjoy the fact that, again, one year almost of the Cal Park Bros. And that wouldn't happen because of you guys. So thank you very much. And again, we want to hear from you. So again, make sure you go to calpartbros.com, click on the message little button there. That'll give you the option to send us a voice message, which we, again, we can play on the show. Or you can go to 405-877-BROS, call us there, leave a voice message there as well. Again, also want to use that for the show. And again, also, if you want to hit us up on social media or send us an email to calpartbros at gmail.com, we'll take it that way as well. But make sure you get on that and do that so we can take get that done. We can hear your voice. We want to hear from you. All right. But always don't forget, when it comes to the Cal Park Bros, make sure you like us, love us, share us, and follow us. Because if you like us, why wouldn't you? Welcome to the Cal Park Bros Podcast. I'm your host, Terrence, and with me is my co-host, Jason, calling in from the back haven in Indianapolis. Jason, how are you, my good man? What's up, man? Hey, ready to get this another another show in? Got the double fours, the 44, son. Throw them up in the air if you got your fingers, or if you have all your fingers, I guess. Throw them in the air, 44, son. Let's get it in. Obama! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. This is episode 44 of the Cal Park Bros podcast. For the uninitiated, Cal Park Bros is the podcast to hear. We are a weekly podcast for fans of culture, current events, sports, life, and entertainment. And as always, we're your hosts, Terrence and Jason. And every single Thursday, we bring you a brand new episode where we discuss the current events of the day, sports, and the athletes we love. And even some of the athletes we loathe. <laughs> no matter the topic, you can expect a brutally honest and fun exchange of snark while learning through the lens of our 30 years of friendship that originated in Calumet Park, Illinois. All right, folks, from a behind the scenes of the show, make sure you hit us up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, all there. That's where all the behind the scenes stuff is or all between the seven stuff. Make sure you go there and just get all that goodness that's there. But make sure you don't forget that the Cal Park Bros podcast is available to listen and subscribe for free wherever you listen to podcasts. Like us, love us, share us, follow us. And folks, if you like us, hell, why wouldn't you? That's right, folks. Like Terrence has been saying this whole time, we are the podcast to hear and watch. Just make sure you're living it, loving it, and doing it. All right. In the first segment, we're going to be talking about the, the game that was. Uh, Jason, actually, we're doing an entire Super Bowl episode today on Cal Park Bros. It's this this shit sounds like a Jody C album. The game, the ads, the show. <laughs> uh but in the first segment we're going to talk about the, the actual game that was um between the lines and whether or not it was actually good or not. What were your thoughts on the game? Uh on the game itself, um I going into it, I was pretty much expecting the Rams to win the game just because Again, at the start of the game, I kind of felt like they had the experience. Cause had, the Rams actually had some players that had actually been to the Super Bowl before. They were the better team in general, from my opinion, offensively at least. I kind of feel like that would overwhelm the, the Bengals at some point. Because no, dis, no disrespect to Joe Burrow, obviously he got there. But with him being only in his second year, it's kind of like, okay, is that going to play a role somewhere down there, somewhere in this game? Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I think the big key was Odell Beckham getting hurt right before the, the uh, right before halftime. Uh, obviously, he had that great touchdown catch and another big catch and whatnot. Um, and w- also, we don't know what would have happened in the second half. We don't know. What we did see was, for the most part, the Bengals do what the Bengals have been doing. That second half defense just starting to shut people down. And really, for the whole game, they're really shutting down the Rams' run the run game. The Rams couldn't do anything. They only had. They, had, they averaged less than two yards to get a carry. So um, the Bengals, for the whole game, did, the, did their thing on defense, but I still kind of figured the passing game would be enough for the Rams to 
do their thing. I actually had the fortune to have Matt Stafford, Cooper Cup, and Robert Woods on my fantasy team before he got hurt, before Woods got hurt. And I know their offense was heavily focused on having those two stud wide receivers. So when Woods got hurt and they got Odell Beckham, they didn't really miss a whole much, whole lot of a beat. And again, we saw that with the Odell Beckham touchdown. Then when he got hurt, that's when that Bengals defense could, shit, could go double team Cup and then kind of put, put the kibosh on that. Also, as we know, that didn't last. Cooper Cup was, you know, getting that heavy, you know, that heavy dose of catches in that fourth quarter, couldn't get in the touchdown catch, and he was the Super Bowl, Super Bowl MVP. Uh, overall, I still say it was a good game. I know other people might say different. They wouldn't necessarily say it was a good game. Obviously, it was a close game, obviously, coming down to, you know, the last possession. It was pretty close the whole whole time. I think the Bengals were up by two possessions at one point, I believe. Uh, but other than that, it was still within reason, obviously, because Rams came back and won. So. Um, I do think it was a good game. I think it was unrealistic for anybody to think it was going to be a high-scoring game, quite frankly. Um, I got some numbers on that later, but uh, what were your thoughts? Uh, yeah, Jason, I thought I thought the game was good at the end. I don't think it was necessarily a good game. And I definitely feel like we've been spoiled this NFL playoffs with regard to a lot of high-scoring and back-and-forth action in fourth quarters. So in comparison, it was almost like this sort of pace, which was kind of pedestrian, you know, neither team could really run the ball well because the front fours are just amazing. I mean, there's a reason Aaron Donald's going to be a first battle hall of famer. Okay. Hey, he made, he made the, the, the game ending or game saving uh, tackle to get the Bengals off the field and close the game out. So, Hey, there you go. But yeah, I looked at that as the the game the game started off really really slow. Like the first 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 quarter and a good chunk of the second quarter was just kind of a dud as far as action goes. There wasn't a lot going on. Um but things started to heat up obviously in the second half. So well Again, not going to disagree with you at all completely. But one thing I will say is, like you said, during this playoffs, we did have some back and forth higher scoring games. That's true. Not all of them were, but some. Obviously, we're going to point to a game we talked about before with the Chiefs and, and, and Bills or whatever. So, um, but that's more of a reasonable thing to think because you have the Chiefs' offense and the Bills' offense. No disrespect to the Bengals, but. At no point in this year would you think that they're going to put up any type of shootout type offense at any point during any game, especially the big game in the Super Bowl in Los Angeles. And I wasn't expecting that at all. I was expecting this to be more one-sided in a way, uh, not a blowout by any means. But I knew we weren't going to get a shootout. We've only, Terrence, we've actually only had technically five shootouts in the history of, of the Super Bowl. In 56 games, really, there's only been five games or both teams scored at least 28 points. Only five times. So, again, those big high-scoring shootout games in the Super Bowl, they don't happen. You got to keep in mind, these are when you get to this point, these are either the two best teams playing each other or the two teams on the hottest streaks. And usually one of them is going to be more adept at playing defense than the other one. So the chances that, that both of them are going to get off scoring 28, 35 points or more isn't very real, realistic. So, yes, it wasn't high scoring, but for a Super Bowl, this was still a good game. Still lasts five minutes. <laughs> well, I mean, again, well, I guess it depends on what your interpretation is, which is obviously open to you know everyone's opinion, what your thoughts are on what a good football game actually is. You know, now I'm, I'm not saying, you know, if it was like seven to six or something like that, then you know that's a different story. But it wasn't that, so it might have been that that one quarter, <laughs> but but still, we got some. Action, yes, yeah, definitely, yes. Last minutes, last two possessions, three possessions. That yes, that was great. But yeah, I mean, you can't really go into it expecting the shootout because that would be really unrealistic. Yeah, I would say that short, this short, game short of the Chiefs being the other team on the field and not the bank. Yeah, I would, Jason. I was just gonna say this game was really marred potentially by two things. Number one, the injury to Odell Beckham Jr., um, and also that 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 no call. Uh, on the uh, 
on on the uh, on the Rams um, for uh, Cincinnati's tight end that a lot of people were saying, oh, well, technically that should have been, you know, offensive. There should have been a penalty because there should have been a face mask on that guy um, because the receiver falls down. But you, you take a closer look and you say, oh, wait a sec. There's a reason that guy fell down. He's literally getting his his helmet twisted around. Yeah, the, the Rams player, I don't remember the, the yeah, like you said, it was tight end. The, the Rams player was Jared, uh, Jared Ramsey. Um, yeah, and then I was, I think I even commented online saying, hey, can't they review pass interference? Well, apparently they took that away, apparently, because uh, it never gets over, hardly ever got overturned, which I get that. But yeah, he clearly, like, granted, also he saw the replay, but clearly, yeah, his neck was turned around, you know, surprising his neck broken, whatever. So, yeah. I will say that, but then also the other big play, I guess people want to point out, is it wasn't a no call. It was an actual call made at the end of that game on the uh, one of the Bengals' defensive players, to where uh, it was a line. Or one, I don't remember his name. It was one of the line, uh, Bengals linebackers lined up probably Cooper Cup or whatever, and and they called pass interference or holding whatever it was, and I'm like, okay, and live action, you see, okay, sure enough, yeah, as as as, as much as he was on the guy. Yeah, he, he clearly must have held him or passed interference. And you see the replay, it's like, oh, no, he didn't. That was just good, solid defense. You know? So I just kind of wonder if that's one of those things, like in the NBA, where people or referees see what they want to see, and all of a sudden, let me throw this flag real quick or call a foul, whatever. Uh, I think that probably played more of a part of it. Not, not going to say the Rams wouldn't have scored anyway, but that definitely played a big role, too, because that basically restarted the downs for the Rams right there on the one or two yard line. And at that point, you know, obviously they got in, and I had to imagine they weren't going to stop them at that point. So, um, now obviously the Bengals had their chance, though. They could have come back down the field. They were on the Rams' side of the field. But, like I said earlier, Aaron Donald, on that last play of the Bengals' uh, possession, he took care of it. Bro couldn't even get a pass off. So, so yeah. Yeah, I was I, – listen, I'm not saying that Joe Burrow is going to get back here because – the stats speak for themselves. The reality is, if you lose the Super Bowl, chances are you're not going to be back here. Uh, well, I mean, I'm not going to say that. I mean, it's I'm saying chances are, which means the stats say it's unlikely that you will get back here. Like history. Ever, wait, wait, you mean ever, or just like next year? We're saying historically, many quarterbacks that lose in this game end up not getting a second bite at the apple, pun intended. Again, I don't want to call you out live on the air, but I'm about to do, man. I don't think that's completely accurate. Okay. I mean, Na- name me at least two quarterbacks that lost this game that managed to get back into it in, let's say, three years since once they lost. Uh, Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. No, 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 no. I'm talking about somebody that lost it their first time. Ah, uh, okay. So you didn't say that. So you got you got to clarify these things, son. Um, so okay, it's not a different story then. So I may have to look into that. You, so you could be right then. Not that you threw the extra little bit in there to save yourself. Like, but, uh, dude, we're not talking about certifiable like Super Bowl MVPs. We're talking about your Rex Grossmans. <laughs> well, okay. No, hang on now. Let's let's stop. Let let's stop. Okay. Your Colin Kaepernick's okay. Let's let's still even. St- and obviously, we don't know how it's going to play out because given this is Joe Burrow's first full season. But Matt, I'm, I'm, Matt Hasselbeck. I'm, 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 I'm giving. I mean, I just named you three. Matt so. Hasselbeck has never been in the Super Bowl. I'm fairly certain that Matt Hasselbeck Start, starting, starting. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, anyway, so okay, but again, like I was getting ready to say, I know this is Joe Burrow's first full season in the NFL. But I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's probably a better quarterback at this point than any of those guys you just named. Certainly better than Rex, Rex Grossman. Okay. I mean, let's be honest with Rex Grossman. Not to take this off, take the attention off the Super Bowl, but Rex Grossman was in the league because of, or rather, he was in the game because of the Bears' defense. Okay. Um, I, I will say that, as I mentioned to you before, is that as a, just as a football fan, I think it's cool to see Matt Stafford actually win a Super Bowl. We all knew he was a talented quarterback, and the, but the fact of the matter is he spent his entire career before this season in Detroit with the Lions. 
Uh, so it's good to see him win a ring. Definitely makes Detroit look really bad that they had a Super Bowl caliber winning quarterback on the roster and couldn't do nothing with him in in 12 years. Then he goes to the Rams and all of a sudden, boom, got a ring. So, um, so it's cool to see him win one. Also, Aaron Donald. Um, you know, I know defensive players don't get enough love for winning MVPs either regular season or otherwise, but the fact that I, for a long time he's been the best look, he's been regarded as the best defensive player in the league. For him to get one now too and had that big play to kind of seal it. Happy for that as well. So uh, also uh, the uh, one of the offensive linemen for the Rams, uh, Whitworth, kind of the same thing. All those years he spent with the Bengals, which is kind of funny. That's the team he beat. Um, right. But all those years in the Bengals, you know, obviously they did, didn't do anything. And then he's, you know, probably his last year in the NFL, he gets to go out on top. So that's pretty cool for him too. So uh, it's always a cool thing. And, of course, we have to mention the fact that this is the second year in a row that the Super Bowl was played, but rather one of the teams in the Super Bowl was actually playing in their home stadium, and in, in both times that you know team won. The Tampa Bay won last year when it was in Tampa Bay, and then the LA Rams won it this year in LA. So um, need to look up where the Super Bowl is next year. So I guess the odds are going to be on that team, no matter who it is. Um, so actually, I think it's in uh, Arizona. Actually, so Cardinals, you're up. I get, but I guess they got to resign Kyler uh, Kyle Murray. I guess too, right? So. Right. Yeah. Key detail. Yeah. It was interesting. I always found it fascinating. Matthew Stafford has been kind of marked as a guy that, oh, we just needs to be in the right situation. Well, this team, this listen, this team was built to win. OK, they stacked the deck on defense. All right. And they've been able to set the world on fire on offense. So they put all the chips in now. So they had to win now. Cincinnati. Who knows? They they may have a bigger window, you know, three, four years. Who knows what Burrow looks like and progresses? It, they're not going to be a surprise anymore. So um, they definitely overachieve. Um, but, yeah, I'm typically happier for defensive players, and especially, especially someone in our age bracket, Jason, <laughs> that got a ring. That's awesome. I mean, what are you trying to say? We old, bro? I'm trying to say we in the same age bracket as that guy that's about to retire. <laughs> yeah, and he's still a professional athlete, so kudos to him. Uh, yeah. yeah, you mentioned the Bengals and getting back. Uh, obviously, you know, they have a few contract things that they need to figure out. Um, they do have a young core. Um, I know Joe, Joe Burrow and Mixon they have the next two years locked up guaranteed, so they're good there. Um, but... Um, there's some guys on the offense. Actually, some of their younger receivers, Tyler Boyd, Chase, they're good. T. Higgins are getting good for the next two seasons as well. So um, I think they're tight ends, though. They probably need to get one of them re-signed, uh, Uzoma. Um, but other than that, they have a young – on offense, that young core is still there. So that leaves you to believe that the Bengals can at least be competitive next year. And I was thinking about this, too, that going forward in the AFC, you got Mahomes with the Chiefs. Josh Allen with the Bills, and now you have to put them up there in a, in a certain way, Joe Burrow with the Bengals. And all of them are super young within about 25-ish. So for the next, potentially, depending on how contracts play out, for the next 10 years, we could be looking at these three kind of dominating the AFC and going to the Super Bowl. For a long time, there was a, a stat line that said for the next, for like the last 20-something years, the representative of the Super Bowl was either Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, or Ben Roethlisberger from the AFC. Now that all three of these guys are might might be might be retiring, and I still don't believe Tom Brady, we could be we could still be looking at the next three guys to dominate the AFC going to the Super Bowl for the next 10, 20 years, whatever it may be. Even yeah. if they do wind up Until, on different teams, so you never know. Yeah, in, ca in case they des decide to defect to another squad in the in all the right. AFC, obviously. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that concludes our review of this Super Bowl. Uh, coming up next. We're going to be talking about the second phase of the Super Bowl experience. These uh, Super Bowl commercials that Jason was so fond of. Coming up next on Cal Park Rose.